Welcome to the site again. Today I've got an interesting vehicle coming in that has been giving me uh, quite a bit challenge. YouTubers, I'm out in the garage now, ready to work on get started on that 2002 uh, Chevy Trailblazer that has the intermittent start. I mean, intermittent. St uh, it just won't start. The instrument panel won't work. Uh, the horn won't blow or anything like that. But as soon as he jumps it. It starts running and it stays running all day, sits overnight, and it won't start again the next morning without a, without a jump. They have a service bulletin that they have put out on that, and it's uh, they actually it's a, they have a couple of them. And one of them is to inspect all the related uh, wiring harnesses when diagnosing miscellaneous DTCs, intermittent drivability concerns, hard start, no start, incorrect gauges in operating air conditioning systems, which we're not experiencing that. Service engine light soon eliminates, and that is doing that. But um, there's a few things on that one that doesn't, doesn't quite check out with what I'm having problems with. Another one they put out is a no start, turn hazard interior lamps, DIC radio, theft alarm wipers, cruise shift interlock horn and key, and signal operator in repair insulating steering column wiring harness. This is what I suspect the problem is. But this is the circuit, and this is what I'm talking about. Once you turn the switch on, the computer receives a signal from the, uh, from the PNP, the park neutral switch, then it sets the ground to to go to the um, to the starter relay, and then when you jump across the relay from pin 87 to 30, and if the starter goes ahead and kicks in, or and if you have it in run, the, the truck will actually start, and you, so you can jump it from the outside and start it. That tells me that the starter is intact, that the wiring for that all everything meets the specifications that it needs. But that doesn't mean that the ground wire is good. It could have a loose ground somewhere touching, or it could have that, uh, that well, they sent out the T TCB on this, or TSB on this uh, wiring harness fix right here. And then they also put out one on the, uh, the connection, the ground connection right behind the IP, that main ground connection coming to that harness. They want you to make sure that that ground is good. So I'm gonna go underneath there, right at the bottom of the panel. That's by the floor, and I'm going to check all that out and re-secure the ground and maybe a few others that come straight off the battery just so I can be sure before I, I decide to uh, take any further. Now, I have notified my customer and made him understand that G they put a recall in on this, uh, this instrument panel on this truck. There's a problem that develops between the computer and the instrument panel, and sometimes the signal will just drop out from the instrument panel, and when that happens, this is the same thing that will go on. You, your instrument panel gauges will all go off, the light will turn off, the horn won't blow, the lights won't turn on. So that could very well be the problem, but that has to be done by the Chevy dealer because as a recall, then they, they are responsible for replacing that default, that default. Or what they normally do or what they're calling for is for reprogramming the instrument panel. That's something I can't do here. They, they of course, they're wanting to use their tech too, their instrument. But any more advanced uh, professional shop with a more expensive uh, scan tool could could probably reprogram that. I, I have done some, seen some research on the computer where they where they speak of that. So I'm going to do what I can now, and uh, so uh, we'll get started now. Now, while I'm working on the harness inside on to the eye instrument panel and to the uh, key switch and all that in there. I want to make sure that I don't have the battery hooked up. And in the meantime, I'm going to um, be charging this battery on a, on, a, on a low trickle charge because when I do get ready to do all this, I want to make sure I have a nice, strong battery. Okay. Now, one of the first things I've done today, I wanted to make sure that all my grounds were good because I'm that one of the, that re the recalls and one of the procedures was to say to make sure that your grounds are good. I've already checked for a parasitic draw. I'm not finding anything, but they have a TSB out on that as well. Uh, but uh, I've already done the thorough parasitic draw test. That was one of the first things I did after I had this battery replaced. I went through here and I put my voltmeter in series over there on the negative side. And I set it to DC amps at 10 amps. Um, and then I started pulling every one of these fuses one at a time and also in the fuse box inside the cabin you have to pull up the back seat and just uh, there's another fuse uh, box back there right underneath the back seat for the interior and computer. And Now the next thing I'm going to do 
I'm just going to pop, pull this, pull this lever out. Right there. There's a lever right there that you have to just, it just pulls straight out. And then you pop that, that cover right there. It's still a little loose from the other day. I'll get that in there better. And I'm going to uh, put the old starter switch back in because it wasn't the new switch, but it was very simple to do and very quick. And it kind of helped me point toward what I think it is. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm almost certain that if it's not what they're talking about, which is down here, underneath, down by the steering column, if you can see my light right there, up in here, there's a connection, a harness that comes around through here. And they're saying that somehow it's rubbing against in there. And, and that is, is something that they had a TSBN. And also where that ties in back there, there's a ground post that has to be checked. I'll know more about it when I get all this, all this cover off right here because this cover does have to come off so I can get to all that. And that's what I'm about to get started doing. I'll try to film as much of it as I can, but it's very difficult to work with just one hand underneath here. Now here I have taken those two screws out that hold the panel, the trim panel underneath the steering column. And this is the bolster that they're talking about. And it is metal that goes around the knee to the steering column. And if you just look right inside there, get this set so I can see those or show those to you. There are the two bolts or screw nuts on this side that hold this one side on. And then there are two more over there. Now there are, are some, looks like some wires. There's a wire over here, but it's underneath. But I think down here is where they're talking about this harness is rubbing against this somewhere underneath here. I don't know exactly just yet, but I'm going to look a little closer. And uh, I'll get back to you on it. But uh, I've got to take this bolster off so I can get to this uh, wiring harness better. So I'm going to take these four bolts out and drop this down. And I'll get back to the video after that. Okay, so now I've got I've gotten here under this panel and I have unplugged this this main bus plug right here that plugs into the, to this uh, female plug over here and um, I'm seeing that uh, that has moisture inside of it and it looks like some of it might have been I, you probably can't tell by the camera here but it's it's very wet there and it might have been some dial, dielectric. But then again, it could just have been, there's all kind of garbage laying out here on this little, on this little tray that I removed. So that's stuff that's been falling through the dash and I found part of a baby picture, very old and just all kinds of stuff. But it, this has a lot of um, just uh, debris, but, but this looks as though maybe coke was spilled on the dash or they sprayed something to clean it with, but there's all kind of moisture in there. And I don't know whether that's dielectric grease or not, but I'm going to take some uh, electric contact cleaner and spray all that and get that all dry and clean and then put some dielectric grease on there before I put that back together. I'm looking at the wires where they were talking about where there might have been a chafing. And that, that's down here, right at this area where the, um, where the, knee, the boot or the cover that I took off down there would have been and I, I've looked at it inspected it real well and I just can't find anything there any kind of pinch or or tear or anything underneath there I'm trying to get a good picture of it for you but I'm having a hard time doing it let's see anyhow I'm, I've looked all underneath here but one thing that I have noticed and and as usual um, the customer sometimes because they don't want to. I don't know why they don't. They don't. They won't tell you things. But for some reason, um, what I'm about to show you, I, w I haven't been told about. I have no idea what these wires are. This, of course, you see that screw right there where my finger is. That's what holds these holds these two together. Is this screw? You screw that back into that hole right there on the piece, and that that holds it together firmly. Of course, you can understand why in this area. But I've been looking at all this and. And checking it out as, as thoroughly as I can. I spent quite a bit of time surveying this, all of this now. But um, what I'm seeing here, I'm going to show you. I'm thinking this was probably a remote starter switch that somebody might have stuck in here. Because the ends of the wires were just taped off. And now here are four wires hanging off of the main bus. Like I said, the ends were taped off. And uh, one of them is, of course, the uh, 
a, a black ground and the other one is an orange that's the battery and this blue one uh, fortunately when I pulled that off it had a it had a wiring label and it says that the um, the uh, dark blue is auxiliary the orange is battery the black is ground and the light blue is CHML I don't CHM B L I can't hardly read that but on any one of those C C R oh man C H M one or L or something like that and um, I'm I'm thinking that that might be again a remote starter switch that somebody had tied in here at some point or another this is a 2002 with 200 and 37,000 miles or something like that on it so uh, I, I'm, I don't know what, what it would possibly go to so I'm just going to cap those wires off and and took them back like they were and just uh, make sure that they're not grounding out anywhere or anything like that and uh, I would just assume that like I said that those were attached to a remote starter what else could they be I I talked to the customer but he, he's a he's a Spanish man an older Spanish man uh, Mexican and he really doesn't he speaks English well and he can understand most of what I say but I don't think he has any idea what any of this work is or what's been done um, even though he does have uh, a cousin or a brother or something that does some mechanical work because he had mentioned to me that his brother or somebody had done some work on it and I'm thinking somebody got up in here and and did some fooling around and uh, and probably possibly even change this uh, IP and if they did if they change this 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 cluster then I don't think the uh, recall is going to do it if uh, if you take it in for the recall to to reprogram the instrument panel they might if they pull it off and see the markings of an aftermarket panel I'm pretty sure they're not going to uh, cover that in a recall well, I'm not I can't say I'm pretty sure but I, I would almost guess that they wouldn't so anyway to just make the video from getting too confusing I'm just going to go ahead and clean this connection because sometimes and it even says so in the TB, TSBs that if you pull these harnesses apart Make sure your connections are good, uh, check for looseness, and then put them back together and make sure they're all dry and clean. That Sometimes that will help, and uh, so that's what we're going to do. And then I'm going to go in here and pull this little panel off by moving this, and just this pops right off. While I got it off, it'll be easier to put back on. Pull that new key switch out of there and put the old one back in because there was nothing wrong with it. Why leave it in? I'll get my money back on that. And... Um, if this doesn't do the trick, that's all that I, I, I've done everything else I can possibly do. I, I follow the procedures that the, the factory calls to do. The only other thing that can I have I can't do here, I can't reprogram this instrument panel. And um, so if it's not being able to communicate with the computer in the back seat back here, they say that uh, that could that could be the problem. And uh, so that's why I've done all this troubleshooting, the wiring, inspecting visually, and just uh, all the things that I can do but um, other than that I just uh, I'm going to have to say that I don't know but maybe what I'm doing today can confirm or uh, you know when I try to start it later if it uh, doesn't do it again then maybe I, I did it unwittingly knowing that I had repaired it by just going in and doing all the things they suggested to do I don't I didn't really want to find damage with the harness but where it went across where that metal boot cover was on there that trim panel covers the uh, the boot there I w you know it would have been great if it if it had been obvious that there had been a chafing in the wire and it looked as though it should have been I I'll tell you I'm gonna make sure I put a, an abrasive cover across that wire where that piece was rubbing against that so that it doesn't happen later but I don't see anything obvious in it I I've looked everywhere except for these wires hanging down and uh, they did have them taped over but you know that's not good enough I'm gonna put some caps on them and uh, then tape it into a bundle and push it up in there and make sure that they can't come out of there and rub against something and uh, I'm going to unplug all the harnesses here on all the connections and I'm gonna clean them all that that one on this little bus down here a little bus bar where they tie in together that just is clipped to the back of the panel but it's not uh, if there's any attachment it's on the bus bar inside 
and then of course this is the same thing. It dead ends over there, but it's a uh, it's probably where they where they meet. I should have researched it better, but I was more or less concentrated on this uh, this big harness plug here that comes up to the key switch and and everything else up there. So I, like I said, I've inspected all of these. There's the uh, OB2 uh, plug there. That all looks good. The wiring all looks good there. I'm, I'm not going to untape every bit of this, but I can't see any physical damage on the outside of it. I'm going to follow this up into the steering column, inspect all of this real good, and, and then remove that switch again. And Like I said, so I'll, I'll just keep on. Now, as you can see, those loose wires that were hanging out that I anticipate, or I suppose must have been a remote starter switch that just seems like it would have been to me or something like that. Um, I went ahead and put uh, wire cat, wire ties on, <laughs> what are those, the wire screws on the end of that, here I am electrician, I can't think of the name of them, and, uh, and I also taped them on, uh, I, I used to work with a union electrician and he taught me that when you, when you have end wires like that, you need to uh, not only screw the caps on, but then tape them on, that'll make them stay, especially where you have vibration and stuff like that, but they're going to be tucked away pretty good up underneath there, and nothing's going to be able to get to them. But, I, you know, one of those uh, tape, the tape that was on there, one of them had a little wire sticking out. It could have been very well touching that uh, that uh, plate that covers the, uh, I can't, <laughs> they could have very well been touching a metal part underneath there. And I su suspect that it's that cover that I had to take off that covers the, uh, the knee on that uh, steering column. And look how sharp the edge of that is where they have wires running out of that. You would have thought that at least they might put a rubber edge around that. They make everything else, else out of plastic and this they made out of steel where all the wires run out of it. Uh, go go figure, right? Maybe they figure they, they know they're going to have some problems with that. Uh, I don't know why they do what they do. But anyhow, um, I'm going to go ahead now and tuck all these wires back in. I have gone through all my connections and cleaned them and sprayed them with contact cleaner so that now all of that is back together and uh, I'm going to uh, Next, uh, tuck that away, and then I'm going to take this little cover off right here underneath the uh, key. Pull that, pull the uh, adjustment lever out, and then that just pops right off. And and uh, then change that key switch because, like I said, I didn't need to change that anyway. Now, now for those of you, now for those of you doing this for the first time, I'm going to show you how how I take this out. Some of these you can pull right out. Others seem to. This one seems to be pretty pretty tough, and you almost think you're going to break it. But you won't. Now it will go flying if you don't hold on to it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's all you got to do to get that off. And then this panel, uh, it 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 just snaps together. And with this apart, it's so much easier to take off than it would have been. And I, I would show you that, but it's impossible for me to undo it with with my with the camera in my hand. But I'll show you what it looks like when I get it off. Okay, and so there's what it looks like when you get it off. This just this just pops right out of there and just slips right back in the same way. Just has these it just has these little snaps. You got to make sure these two guides go in there all, all the way. And I'll I'll try to film that. Uh, there is a video on my site that uh, a guy is doing this, and it, that's all he's doing. And it and he shows it how how easy it really is. It's hard for me to film with uh, do it all with this camera in my hand. I've got to get better filming equipment. It'll make this so much better for all you folks. And I'm sorry, I don't have anything. But you know, you can't start out with everything. You just got to work your way up. So that's what we got. Now I'm going to inspect these wires here. Make sure all these are all look good. But uh, right here, this is the switch right here. This little, this little box just drops right out. There's two clips on it that just push in on either side. And then you, put, you pull that down a little bit. And then you just pop this little tab out and this comes right out. I'll show you here. Well, just look at the film I have on my site. It'll be much easier for you to follow that one than to follow me right now. I'm kind of in a hurry. The customer's going to be here to pick this up in a little while. Okay, I'm getting ready to put this cowling back on underneath the uh, steering column here. And I can't reach in there with my hand to put the bolts on there. It's just too deep in there if you can see that. But a good trick for doing that is just take a piece of tissue... Put right over the top of your of your uh, socket and stick your bolt in there or your nut in there. And I have never had one fall off over all the times that I've been doing. This is one of the best hacks that I ever came across right here. I saw this on Schrodinger's box, and uh, this is really a great tip. 
So next time you have to reach in somewhere and put a bolt in a deep place, just put a little piece of tissue across of it. When you get ready to take it off, it just slips right off. Your socket will come right off. It just works great. Okay. Okay, now there she is all back together. It all goes back together, together really easy. There's really not any difficulty. You just have to make sure you tuck all those wires away where they don't get pinched and crushed and all that kind of stuff. All the, the steering keep cover is back on, the pins back in for the uh, pulling the steering wheel down, the steering wheel lever. And uh, so, you know, just watch that video I told you about twice already on my site and and you'll be able to put that key switch in with no trouble at all. It's just, there's just nothing to it. Just put it back in the same way you take it out because of the room underneath there is very limited for those wires. They each have their own routing and, uh, you know, it has to be done exactly right. But it's simple. Okay, now I'm going to go back here. Or I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take this, this, um, this, this cover off right here and I'm going to put the fan back in. When I pop this off, I'll show you what it looks like and then I'll show you what it looks like once it's back on again. Once I, once I put that aspirator, plug it back in and install it and then put the cover back on. Then I'm going to go in the back seat and pull it up and get to that fuse box and just uh, check that harness connection back there to the computer. Make sure it's all nice and tight and secure. And um, then that'll be all I can do. Then if, it, uh, if that doesn't correct the problem, I believe they will have to reprogram this instrument panel because that is a TSB that came out in a regular occurrence with these if you as a matter of fact usually it's not just reprogramming it But it's uh, putting another one in because they say because of the kind of solder they used that um, Silver solder that it corrodes over there and it causes the panel to start um, Passing current across it like a battery would that gets too dirty a, a ghost voltage and that can cause it to uh, have all kind of problems so uh, That'll have to be up to the uh, dealer because I just don't have that tech 2 equipment Okay, let me get started on this uh, post now. Okay, now this is just how this is just how easy this is. Like I said, this just pops off, and it just has those little metal clips that just pop into the door. And right over here, let me get on it. Is the is the plug just right down there? I think you can see it. That uh, aspirator plugs in right there, and then it just pushes in to this hole. Right here in the door post just just goes right in there, and then you just put the uh, cover right back over the top of it And here's Here's that little speaker hole that everybody thinks is a speaker that that's where the fan the aspirator draws in the uh, air The indoor the inside temperature and lets the computer know But without it without this aspirator you cannot make this this heater work So if you ever take it out, if, you know you get ready to get cold if you don't replace it which I want to do, but my customer, um, he's just limited on money right now, so he would rather hear the squeaking fan than have to worry about, uh, you know, replacing it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it in. I'll get one more picture before I snap it back together. Okay, this is the aspirator that I was telling you that goes along that door post. It's got just a long cord here on it. It just plugs into that plug, and uh, then this fan draws air across this, these two little, these two little, wires you see here just like a just like a, a mass airflow sensor in sort of a way but i'm going to blow it out with air and, and keep cleaning as best as i can but i'm not going to spray it with anything and uh, then you put this little this little rubber boot back on here this is kind of like a vibration damper so that it, uh, you know if it is making a noise it won't make as much and keeps it from wiggling around these are the two two pins right here that just uh snap it into the to the post in the opening i'll show you that when i get ready to do that and uh then you know, the, the uh, heater will be able to work again because this is what the computer uh, talks to the computer and tells it what the temperature is. Okay. Okay, there's what the little fan looks like plugged in. It just slips into that little slot there. Then the wire just runs down there. And then, of course, you got to slip this, uh, this cover back underneath this on both sides, the, the floor trim down there. And then this just pops back in in, the, in these little posts and clips just pop back in. And that's it. And now, just so you can see, I mean, that's just how easy it is. It just pops right in there. You just take your fingers up there at the top and pop it out. And that is what it looks like on the outside. Everybody thinks that's a speaker up here by the, the driver's head. And if it's still rattling after I blew it out, well, that's what the customer wanted. But as long as it's controlling the automatic climate control, 
the computer, you know, getting its signal, getting their temperature in here, then it can control the automatic climate control. And that's what, uh, that's what it is. If you hear that rattling, that's not a speaker, that's an aspirator. Okay, so all the, everything's put back together. I just put the key in the ignition. It fit perfectly, you know, even after, after you take it. One thing you got to remember to do, I should have said earlier, don't leave the key in the ignition. And you have to disconnect your battery when you're working on these things because you just don't want to burn something out. But mainly, you just don't want anybody to make the mistake of turning that key while you've got that switch out because it's got a gear in there that has to, has to mesh. Matter of fact, when you put a new switch in, you have to look at the old one, put it beside it, and turn that little gear inside there so that it matches perfectly the way the one was, was that was taken out. But anyway, the key slips in very easy. I'm going to put it in, turn the key. We got all of our panels on the light. Let's see if we get crank. There we go. So our key's in, all of our connections are good, obviously. And the truck is running, but that doesn't mean anything. Now, the other day when I did this, before I did all this work and troubleshooting and all that, this truck, because it had been sitting for a while, it just went dead. The, the, it showed me the problem. But uh, the customer was standing there. He had to go, so I just went ahead and jumped it. And that's why I had to pull it back in here and, and, and finish up today. I, I let him know today that the next time, you know, that I, I have to do something like this, I don't like having to break off in the middle of a job because then you got to try to restart but uh, you know you got to do what you can to help your customer but, and I should have made that clear to him before I got started but anyhow we're there and uh, it didn't do what it did the other day it started right up I can't say that it's a fix yet because I'm going to ask the I've talked to the customer and asked him to leave this truck with me tonight when he gets through doing whatever he has to do and then let me try to uh, uh, make sure and see that it's doing okay or I can even he only lives a couple of blocks from me I can walk down there in the morning because it's always in the morning after it's sat all night that doesn't want to crank up if it does it again then uh, the next step would be to either turn to this instrument panel which is a you know was a recall the re the programming on it or go to the uh, computer in the back seat okay this is the the computer and the fuse box in the back seat you just pull up that that back seat and there it is and you know look at look all the stuff under this back seat a lot of times that can be the stuff that that is going to be getting you in trouble but all, all you have to do to take this off is just um, hold on a second just just this just lifts off this comes right off of there and there is your bus for your for your computer this is your computer and this is your your fuse box for back here I didn't shut the door today. I wanted a little fresh air in here, so it got colder than I really should have let it. But I'm not going to try to be taking plastic parts, of, especially something that goes to the computer that would be costly if it broke. And I know dealing with plastic, no matter how careful you are, sometimes the colder it gets, the easier and more brittle it breaks. Okay, I mean the more brittle it is, the easier it breaks. All right, then I'm going to call this uh, the end of what I can do, and then I'll just have to wait and see if this uh, has the same problem once we fire it back up. I pray to God it doesn't because I, I want for this to be fixed for the for the gentleman and not have to go into reprogramming this computer or re reprogramming that uh, that instrument panel up there that that could get run into some money okay I'm gonna call that the, the end of the video and I'll give a little follow-up as soon as I get this truck up and wrapped up all right here's my friend mr. Navarro coming to pick up his his, his truck that I've been working on today and we hope that we don't have to do the recall on the instrument panel. But uh, after I put the aspirator back in, after blowing it out and cleaning contacts, it works much better. The noise, the vibration, static is gone. And uh, the truck fired right up. I, tr I truly believe that the main contact, the main, I mean the main bus uh, plug right there was really dirty and greasy inside. So I sprayed it with contact cleaner and let it dry, blew it out and put it back together. And I think that's going to heal us. What do you think, Mr. Navarro? You think it's going to go? <laughs> okay then, that's what we call it.